Hello and welcome. We start with the big story from Kenya. Massive protests have erupted in the country's capital, Nairobi, against the Ruto government's proposal on new tax hikes. Hundreds of protesters, mostly of the youth, gathered outside the Kenyan parliament. Now, the protesters were met with harsh resistance as police hurled tear gas canisters. The unrest forced businesses in the capital city to close temporarily amid the fear of looting. Around 300 protesters have been arrested. People in Kenya fear that the proposed taxes will exacerbate the cost of living crisis, lead to job losses and stifle economic growth. Civil society groups say despite arrests, the protests and sit down outside the parliament building will continue. I have read it and I'm sure there's so many politicians in that uh, gas house that don't understand what the finance bill is saying, you know. Uh, I, I just want to say that the power is with us, with the young people, we'll take over and we'll conquer. Power to the people. The new tax hikes have been proposed in the Finance Bill 2024 that is due to be debated in Parliament and passed before the 30th of June. The bill is a part of the latest efforts by President William Ruto's administration to boost revenue and reduce external borrowing for Kenya. Last month, President Ruto defended the proposed taxes, saying the country must be self-sustaining. But as the protest escalated, the Ruto administration scrapped plans to impose some of the contentious hikes proposed earlier. Now, this includes a 16% levy on bread, the proposed taxes on motor vehicles, vegetable oil, money transfers, as well as a proposed ecological tax that targeted products with adverse effects on the environment. The levy would now only apply to imported goods. Proposals to the legislature. The legislature have interrogated those proposals. The public has interrogated those proposals. The public have recommended, through public participation, their feelings, their ideas, their suggestions. And because the people's representatives have listened to the people through public participation, they have adjusted the uh, proposals from the executive. The original bill, which was first presented in Parliament last month, also seeks to increase import duties for goods, raise taxes on telephone internet data, digital businesses and food delivery services. When William Ruto came to power in 2022, he promised to revive the economy and to alleviate poverty. But in the last two years, his policies have sparked widespread discontent he has raised income tax, doubled VAT on petroleum products to 16%, and increased health insurance contributions. Ruto says these steps have been taken to eliminate the country's debt of nearly $80 billion. While Kenya is among the most dynamic economies in East Africa, roughly a third of its population lives in poverty. It is currently dealing with stubbornly high inflation and debt distress. Its GDP is uh, also expected to slow to 5% this year, from 5.6% in 2023. Though the new tax bill will face opposition, it is likely to be passed, as Ruto's alliance holds a majority in the parliament. Now, for more on this, we have with us political and economic analyst, Professor Exen Iraqi, who is joining us live from Nairobi. Hello to you, Professor. Thank you for being with us. Hello, good afternoon. How are you? Great, great. Thank you. Now, massive protests have erupted in Nairobi over the new tax hikes. What could be the immediate impact of these tax hikes on the people of Kenya if they are implemented? I think the most immediate effect will be a rise in prices. Because when taxes go up or when new taxes are introduced, the businessmen or entrepreneurs always pass that cost to the consumer or to the customers. 
So if there are new taxes, the prices will go up. And remember the prices are going up when we had further price rises because of the war in Ukraine. The price of petrol went up, the price of uh, other commodities went up. Remember we had recent floods in Kenya and that is going to affect the price of food because of because some food was affected by drought. So if the prices goes up, there will be less demand for goods and services because people don't afford. And that is going to lead to job losses. And if there are job losses, we might have some social instability because hungry people are often hungry people. Mm. So that will be the immediate effect if the taxes goes up yeah. or if the taxes are implemented. Now, since coming to power, President William Ruto has introduced several new but unpopular measures with the aim of reducing Kenya's debt as it reels under economic distress. In your opinion, how effective could the Ruto government policies be in eliminating debt? And if not, could there be an alternative approach? I think eliminating debt is not as easy as it sounds. Remember, some of this debt is long term, is in boards that are going to be maturing the next 20, 30 years. So it's not easy for any government, including developed countries' government, to deal with debt. So what we probably need to think is how we can eliminate debt in the long run, but not in the short run. Even with the tax raises, the government is still borrowing money. And that's why the interest rate for some boards are going up. Mm -hmm. So I think the most sensible solution or the best solution we can come up with is to reduce waste and to reduce corruption. And most Kenyans believe that if we reduce the waste, if we reduce corruption, I think there will be no need for more debt, there will be no need for higher taxes. And that can be immediate. Yeah. Right, and anger against William Ruto has been growing, with protesters now demanding him to step down. Could the failure of his economic policies lead to his political downfall? That is very unlikely under the current circumstances in Kenya. Remember, President Ruto doesn't have a credible opponent for now. So what I foresee is in 2027, the current economic crisis will affect the, vote, the voting patterns. So we should not be talking about uh, President Ruto losing power now, we should be talking about 20, 20, 2027, which is not very far away. Hmm. Professor, thank you very much for being with us on First Post Africa and your valued insights. Thank you and have a good evening. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison Lagrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. From elections, to climate change, to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.